beginning, all America was Virginia. William Byrd, 1533 unified her subjects with a growing spirit of nationalism. In foreign affairs, Elizabeth was cautious, conservative, and often indecisive, refusing to expand public money for overseas colonies. Yet during her reign, privately funded expeditions sponsored by adventurers received her unofficial support, laying the foundation for English colonies in the New World. The finest moment of her 45-year reign came in 1588 when England, small but very effective way, defeated a uh, small but very effective navy, defeated a powerful armada sent by King Philip II of Spain. When Queen Elizabeth died in 1603, her cousin, James VI of Scotland, became King James I of England. The Queen had never married and was called the Virgin Queen. Sir Walter Raleigh was allowed by his Queen to name the North American coast Virginia in her honor. So that's why the state of Virginia is called Virginia in honor of Queen Elizabeth I. Never knew this just now. Cool. The importance of Jamestown on May 14, 1607, at a spot about a mile from where you are standing now. Okay, a mile from where we are now. A group of 104 colonies disembarked from three small sailing ships to establish the first permanent English settlement in North America. This settlement called Jamestown is where the United States of America really began. The founding of Jamestown sparked a series of cultural encounters that helped shape our nation and the world. So, it's very important that we have to stop here in Jamestown. This is the gallery from happening on 1607. Pocahontas, the cultural appropriation of Pocahontas has been depicted in stories and art as a heroine in early American history, but many Virginian Indians today feel that Pocahontas is more a symbol of white America than of their culture. By 1924, she was considered so much a part of white culture that claiming descendancy from her, as many notable Virginia families proudly did, led to the Pocahontas Clause of the Racial Integrity Act. Under the act, used to enforce restrictive rights of segregation, Virginians were classified as either white or colored. 
One drop of white blood put one into the colored category which served to negate the cultural identity of Virginia Indians. But under the Pocahontas Clause, a person who had less than one sixty-fourth part Indian blood were still considered white. Kingship with Pocahontas did not threaten all white status and privileges. So, Pocahontas, was she a traitor? Was she a kidnapped victim forced to adopt her captor's ways? Or was she a strong supporter of her own people? At a young age, taking on responsibilities of interpreter and ambassador between two cultures, we will never know. But Pocahontas' story can serve as a reminder that her people live on. Today, eight Virginia Indian tribal groups trace descents from the original Pocahontas chief tomb, which is where Pocahontas belongs. This is the voyage and arrival. They departed in England in London December 20, 1606. Then they crossed the Atlantic via Canary Islands. They arrived in Canary Islands in February 1607, passing the continent of Africa, crossed southwards of the Atlantic Ocean, arrived in Dominica. That must be Dominican Republic, March 24, 1607, in Guadalupe, Guadalupe, March 27, 1607, Neves, March 28 to April 3, 1607, Virgin Islands, April 4 to 6, 1607, Mona, April 5, 10, 1607, Monito, April 6, 1607, and finally arriving here in Jamestown in May, uh, in, arrived in Virginia, like they arrived in the waters of Virginia in April 26, 1607 and settled in James, here in Jamestown in May 13, 1607. It took them five months to cross the Atlantic. And then after they arrived, they started grabbing the Indian land. <laughs> Oh, what? Wait. We are here on the James River on the boat. I don't know if this, is, this must not be the real boat used in 1600, but a replica of the English settlers, the English settlers that came from England landed here in Jamestown. We're here in Jamestown on the James River.
in there. Okay. So let's we'll make it an easy math problem. Let's say that a hen lays 300 eggs a year. And she can do that for four years. How many eggs did you get for that hen? 1,200. Oh, see, they have dried fish in the olden times. They still do. <laughs> in the Philippines. Oysters, we have plenty of that in Manapa. Dried fish, plenty of that in Manapa. Beans, the same food they eat in the 1600s still exists now. Okay, so which is going to give you more food? 1,200 eggs or one chicken? Yeah. So the only time we eat chicken, chicken. is if you have too many roosters. Oh. Sorry, guys. <laughs> or when the hen gets too old, the chicken lays eggs. Oh, so you only kill the roosters, not the hens. When the hen gets too old, Eggs. So that's then when she, she said that for four years they killed the ladies. <laughs> so <laughs> they killed the men first before the ladies, right? Let's go. At least the ladies have to live four years. <laughs> okay. <laughs>